Today on our 2014 Chevrolet Silverado 2500, we'll be installing the B&W Turnover Ball Underbed Gooseneck Trailer Hitch, part number BWGNRK1012. Now we'll begin first by lowering down the spare tire and setting it out of the way for now. Next we'll go ahead and remove each of the rear wheels and set those aside for now as well. Next we're going to go ahead and remove the fender liners. To do this we'll need to remove four screws and three push fasteners. Now we'll go ahead and repeat the same process on the driver's side. Next we'll go ahead and secure the exhaust using a safety strap. Once our safety strap's in place, we're going to go ahead and use a little spray lubricant and a large pry bar to remove a few exhaust hangers in order to allow us to lower the exhaust down out of the way. Now we're going to go ahead and loosen up these four nuts right here on the exhaust. By doing this, it'll allow the exhaust to pivot downward enough, then give us a little more working room here at the back end. Now that we have the four nuts loosened up, but not removed from the stud, we'll come back to the rear of our vehicle, and we'll loosen up our safety strap a little bit. Next we're going to go ahead and mark out the heat shield using our paint marker, the areas that we're going to need to trim out. Now in order to trim out our section of heat shield, we'll be using a cutoff wheel and a pair of tin snips. Next we're going to go ahead inside the bed of the vehicle, we'll measure from the rear portion of the bed up to the appropriate measurement depending on if you have a long or short bed. We'll go ahead and mark the appropriate location in the bed as well as centering it between each of the two wheel wells. Next we'll go ahead and take our pilot bit and drill through the center mark that we just made on our bed. We'll go ahead and switch over to our four inch hole saw. Now we're going to be using this piece of plywood to help keep the bit centered. That way if the bit would jump, it wouldn't scratch the bed. Now we'll go ahead and drill out our four inch hole in the bed of our vehicle. We're going to go ahead and remove the four bolts over here on the passenger side that hold the bed in place. Now we're going to need to come over here on the passenger side fender well we're going to need to cut a small notch out of the lip right here in order to slide one of the cross members in place. We're going to go ahead and take out this single piece of sheet metal right here. That'll allow us to slide our cross member into position and then turn it up. Now we'll go ahead and take the front cross member, which is the L-shaped piece, We'll go ahead and slide it in from the passenger side using the notch that we just trimmed out. As you slide it into position, you will need to gently lift up on the passenger side of the bed to give yourself just enough clearance to slide the front cross member in place. Now we'll take the rear cross member, which is the solid bar, and you'll notice how the holes are offset to one side just a little bit. When the bar is in position, you want to make sure that the holes are closer to the frame rail than the bed. So we'll go ahead and slide our bar into position sideways. Once the bar is into position, 
we'll go ahead and again gently lift up on that side of the bed, allowing us to flip the bar into the correct position. Now that that's done, we can go ahead and put our four bolts that hold the bed to the frame back in on the passenger side. We'll need to put our half inch by inch and a half long bolt into the second hole over on the front cross member. We'll secure the bolt in place by sliding the rubber o-ring on, making sure that it's firmly against the cross member. Now we're going to go ahead and use this support device here to help hold up the center section of the gooseneck from underneath. It has a, a bracket that comes down, it'll go through the gooseneck portion, and then we'll put a bolt to hold it in place. This will allow us to bolt everything else together and not have to support the center section of the gooseneck. Now that we have our center section supported, we'll go ahead and show you the hardware that we're going to be using to connect the front cross member to the center section. We'll be using a half inch by inch and a half long bolt, half inch lock washer, and a half inch hex nut. Now we'll go ahead and install the hardware loosely. Now we'll go ahead and attach the front cross rail to the center section. Now the location all the way on the driver's side, we've already installed the bolt with the rubber O-ring Secure it in place. So all we have to do for this location is add the half inch lock washer and hex nut. We'll go ahead and just leave these hand tight for now. For the rear crossbar attachment, we'll be using a half inch by two inch long hex bolt, a half inch lock washer, followed by a half inch flat washer. We'll do this for the four locations connecting the center section to the rear crossbar. We'll go ahead and slide the rear crossbar up against the center section, lining up the holes. Let's go ahead and point out the locations on the frame that the 5 ace bolts installed in the bolt guides will be coming out of. This is the front location, and this is the rear location. Now the rear location bolt and bolt guide will be installed from the inside of the frame. Go ahead and take our front bolt guide and our 5 ace bolt. Now it can be a little difficult to thread this bolt into the bolt guide here, so it may help if you take a wrench just to get things started. Now that we have our front bolt in, making sure that the bolt is stopped by these two little edges here so it can't back off, go ahead and feed it in through the access hole here. Now for the rear location, we'll again be using a 5 8 bolt, but this time we'll be using the longer bolt guide. We'll repeat the same process by threading the bolt onto the bolt guide, but this time we'll be using an access hole on the inside of the frame rail to slide the bolt into position. I will go ahead and take our driver's side side plate, sliding it over the two 5 ace bolts that we just installed. We'll then put a 5 ace flat washer, followed by a 5 ace lock washer, and finally a 5 ace hex nut. Just go ahead and install these hand tight for now. We'll then go ahead and repeat the same process over on the passenger side. Now for the front location to connect the cross member to the side plate, we'll be using a half inch by inch and a half bolt, half inch flat washer, half inch lock washer, and a half inch nut. Now for the rear location, right here, we'll be using a half inch by inch and a half bolt, half inch lock washer, and a half inch flat washer.
We'll then go ahead and repeat the same process over on the other side of the vehicle. Now we're going to go ahead and tighten down the eight bolts that attach the center section to the cross member. Next we're going to go ahead and take our tape measure and measure from here up to here and make sure that it's the same distance on both sides. We'll also double check in the bed and make sure that the hitch looks squared up. Now that we have our hitch centered, we'll go ahead and tighten down each of the five ace nuts, two on each side. Then we'll tighten down the half inch bolts to secure the side plate to each of the cross members. Now keep in mind, anything that we do to one side, we'll need to do over on the other side. Now that we have all the hardware tightened down, we'll go ahead and torque the hardware down. You need to torque the half inch hardware down first, so we'll basically repeat the same process we did in tightening all the hardware down. We'll start with the eight bolts that connect the center section to the cross members. Now that we have all of our hardware secure, we're going to go ahead and we can remove this support apparatus that we were using to keep the center section of the gooseneck in place. Next we're going to need to install the latch pin release handle. The handle portion with the rubber end of the handle will end up in this general area here. We'll need to install it from the underside and feed it out. We'll then take our latch handle here, we'll feed it through the little groove. And line it up with the tab that's up here. Take our bolt, take our bolt, which is that little one, feed it through the handle. Once we have the bolt in place, we can go ahead and put the lock nut on. Next we're going to go ahead and drill four half inch holes from the underside for our safety chain U-bolts. Let's go ahead and point out the four locations that we'll need to drill a half inch hole in. Now over here on the driver's side, because of the angle in the gas tank, we're going to go ahead and do a smaller pilot bit from the underside up into the bed, and then we'll come back with our half inch bit from the top side down. Now that we have our pilot hole from the underside, we'll go ahead and come up to the top side and drill out to the half inch drill bit. We'll then take our two U-bolts and slide them through the two holes. Now we'll go ahead and take the spring in this position, so the smaller side on the downside, we'll slide it over the end of the U-bolt, and then we'll put a lock nut on. We'll do this at all four of the locations. Now when we tighten down the lock nut, we want to make sure that we just barely see a thread or two that comes through. Now we'll go ahead and reinstall our exhaust. We'll go ahead and start over here on the passenger side. We'll go ahead and put the fender well liner back into position. 
With our liner back in place, we'll go ahead and put the three push fasteners back in, as well as the four screws. Now we'll go ahead and do the driver's side fender liner as well. And we may need to do a little trimming on this one. We'll have to put it in and see how much we need to cut off. Now that we have our driver's side fender liner back in place, you'll notice that it's gonna hit the handle here. We'll go ahead and take our yellow paint marker and mark out the area that we'll need to trim out. We then go ahead and take our, our razor knife and we'll trim out the fender liner. As you can see here with our fender liner trimmed out, there's plenty of room for the operation of our release handle. Now we'll go ahead and reinstall each of our rear tires as well as put our spare tire back up into position. Next we'll go ahead and show you how the ball operates as well as the latch handle. Now to unlatch it, you'll simply pull the handle out and rotate it forward. Now you can pull the ball out of the center section and either put it in the up position or flip it over and put it in the storage position. Once you're done there, you'll simply come back to the handle and release it and it'll lock the ball into position. And that'll do it for the installation of our B&W Turnover Ball Underbag Gooseneck Trailer Hitch, part number BWGNRK1012 on our 2014 Chevrolet Silverado 2500.